Hi, in this tutorial for ASP.NET Web Development, we're going to do form validation. So by the time you're done, you'll be able to fill out the form and you'll get these warning messages if your data does not match what you expect. Once you finish the form validation, you'll be given a report to show what you've just entered. So in some of the details of this application we're going to make, you'll notice that if I leave an item out, I'm going to get a warning message that says this field is required. You notice also that these uh, descriptions here are somewhat more detailed than what you would just expect if you had a normal variable name there. And you can also check for a range. So for instance, if I say my pain threshold is at 55, it says, sorry, you're not within the right range. And we'll be a little bit cynical. We're asking about the patient's net worth. So if you just say a lot, they're going to actually ask you for a number. And so that's what we're going to do here in the next few minutes, is create these form validation rules. So let's get started by creating a new project. So I'm going to choose a .NET web development project, and I'm going to call mine Appointment. And let's choose the framework here as 472 is what I'm currently working on. If you're from the future, you might have a newer version. Let's go ahead and select Empty and the checkbox for MVC folders. No authentication in this case. Let's go ahead and create it. So to start a program, let's first of all pick a model. So I'm going to right click and choose a new item and add a model. Let's choose Code and down at the bottom, let's choose Appointment Model. So let's create some properties for an appointment. The first thing I'm going to ask for is the patient's name. Then I'm going to use the date time format and get an appointment date that we're going to set up. Let's be a little cynical here and ask for the patient's net worth. And so net worth will be a decimal data type. Let's put in the doctor's last name. And then finally, let's ask the patient for his or her current pain level, which will be a number from 1 to 10. Now in a real database application, we would probably be using ID numbers. So we would have a doctor's ID and we would have a patient's ID number. In this case, we're just worried about data entry. So we're asking for strings for the patient name and the doctor's name. We will be needing a constructor in this program. So I'm going to right click and choose one of the quick coding helps and create a constructor with all of the properties. So let's go into the controllers folder and add a new one. Add new controller. Let's choose a blank one and choose add. His name is going to be called appointment controller. So if we want this appointment controller to work, we have to go into the routes. So let's go into the route config file. And for the default controller, instead of using home, let's call this thing appointment. So the default action will be index. Back in the uh, appointment controller, let's go ahead and right click inside of the code and choose add a view. We'll leave it as index and we are going to hopefully create a new appointment. So I'm going to choose the template for create. The model class is going to be our appointment model and I'll leave everything checked as you see it here. Click add. As you can see, the program has completed its code. It has a bunch of HTML, and it has added some bootstrap, and it has added some formatting with some layouts. So lots of things that were added for us. Let's see if we can understand what it looks like first. So when I run the program, you can see I have a basic appointment model data input form. I haven't changed any details yet, but you can see all of this here. If I choose Create, you can see that there's already some data validation that's being in, in here by default. Let's fix up some of the data entry here. First of all, I like the, uh, the automatic labels here, but we could make them prettier. Now you would think that if you wanted to make a label pretty, you would have to go into the HTML code where the label is displayed, but that's not quite true. In ASP.NET, you make a adjustment here in the object called the appointment model. So let's start here with the uh, properties and add some new properties. 
So I'm going to insert something called display name. So I put a square bracket, the word display name, parentheses, and quotations. Inside here, we're going to put a string. So some text goes in here. Now, it doesn't like the word display name yet because it has to be imported. So we'll do a uh, potential fixes, and we'll use the using statement called uh, looks like component model and uh, display name. Let's try the component model. And that one seems to work. So I think that'll pick up other issues as well. Now instead of this nonsense text, let's put in here patient's full name. Now when I run the program again, you can see that the label now is patient's full name, just like I indicated in the model. So it's no longer the variable name, but we have a more descriptive text. Let's change the other ones as well. So I'll put in some more display names here. So you can be as brief or as broad as you would like. I'm choosing what is the desired date for your next visit. So that's a little wordy, but it gets the point across that my display name is unique. Now, how much money do you have? What's the name of the doctor you want to see? And what's your current pain level are all other display names. Let's run the program and see how that looks. Hey, hey, we're getting some good stuff now. I've got a more full description on each of these labels. And when I create, I still have a few of these data entry things that I want to fix, but uh, I've at least got the labels done. And you notice it was all fixed using a property in the model. So next I want to require that all data fields be entered. So I'm going to simply use the square bracket and the word required. So this will allow the uh, form to be checked before the uh, submit button is accepted. Now, required has to be imported, it looks like, so I will choose the using option to get the required in. So I want to make everything on the field required, so I will copy and paste required from the first item all the way to the last. And to spread things out, I'll put a blank line in just to make it easy to read. This time I run the pro program again, and I choose create, and you can see now I've got a red message for each of these. So where do these red messages come from? How do they automatically show up here on my form? Well, they're in the HTML code. Let's go find them. So if I right-click and choose the uh, properties or inspect this code, you can see that if I can uh, navigate to one of these red labels. And you can see that there is a span class that is called a uh, class of danger. So this is a bootstrap name. So CSS bootstrap has the color danger for red. So let's go look at the index page here and look at the HTML code to find out where these errors are occurring or where they are being flagged. So I scroll down a little ways and I come to the section on the appointment uh, patient's name. So you can see patient's name is being used here. Now right below the edit box is this message here called a validation message for. And then it says here we're going to use class danger. So it's going to be red when the... Uh, this part of the, the form is displayed. So if we didn't put this line in here, if we just deleted line 22, we wouldn't get any validation error messages. So it's important that you leave it there. If you want to experiment, you can change from danger to warning, just because I know that that's one of the CSS class names in, in Bootstrap. So now if I try to uh, enter the form without any data, you can see that uh, warning is a little less uh, red than the uh, regular danger sign. So it's slight difference, but it is, a, it is a different one. So if I inspect and look at the code behind this, you can see that I have changed the warning of the class name from danger. If you want to play around with it, you could go in and change text success, and now you get a green message. So those are all bootstrap color schemes. The last thing I'm going to do is change the H2 tag to say create a new appointment so that we have a title at the top of the page. In the next video, we're going to create a form that will echo back the data as well as display the dates and currency in their proper format. So that's in the next video.